Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Catalyst Chemistry Classes. In today's class, I'm going to discuss a synopsis for the chapter structure of atom. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your contacts. Okay, so in structure of atom first, we have to know what are the subatomic particles that are present in atom. Those are electrons, protons, as well as neutrons. So electrons are discovered by J.J. Thomson and its charge will be negative. The mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg or 9.1 into 10 power minus 28 grams. And in terms of unified mass, like atomic mass unit, it's 0 0.000548 amu and its charge per mass ratio is 1.76 into 10 power 8 coulombs per gram. Similarly, for proton, which is discovered by Goldstein and its charge will be positive. The mass of proton is 1.672 into 10 power minus 27 kg or 1.672 into 10 power minus 24 grams. And in terms of AMU, it is 1.00757 AMU. And the charge by mass ratio for proton is 9.58 into 10 power 4 coulombs per gram. And neutron was discovered by James Chadwick, and which is having a neutral charge with mass slightly greater than that of proton. That is 1.675 into 10 power 27 kg or 1.675 into 10 power minus 24 grams or 1.00893 AMU. Then, so these are the characteristics of fundamental particles like electron, proton, as well as neutrons. Then, other particles of atoms are positron. So it was discovered by Anderson. It builds a unit positive charge and its mass is equal to that of an electron. Thus, its mass are regarded as negligible. It merges with an electron and emit electromagnetic radiation. So, which is denoted by symbol E plus. Then, meson discovered by Yukawa. Different types of mesons particles are possible in the atom and these are called meson family. Neutrino, discovered by Pauli. They do not bear any charge. That is, they are electro-neutral particle. Means they are electrically neutral, similar to neutrons. Then, antiproton, discovered by Serge. It bears a unit negative charge and its mass is equal to that of proton. Then, representation of an atom which is represented by ZXA, where Z is atomic number and A that represents mass number and X is the symbol of atom. Then mass number, mass number is nothing but it's the total number of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus. Hence, which is also considered as total number of nucleons. Atomic number represented by Z for neutral atom, number of proton or number of electron that represents the atomic number. And for charged atom, like it may cation or anion, number of electron, which is equal to Z minus charge and atom. And Z that represents number of protons only. Then isotopes. We know that they are the atoms of a given element which have the same atomic number but different mass number. We can take an example of hydrogen, chlorine, carbon, any isotopes that have same atomic number but different mass number. Isobars, they are the atoms of different elements which have the same mass number but different atomic number. Like here, if you consider tritium, which is having 1H3, hydrogen, isotopic form of hydrogen it is tritium having the atomic number 1 and mass number 3. And if you consider helium, 2HE3, 
so which is an isotope of helium which is having atomic number 2 and mass number 3 so both this tritium as well as helium with the three mass number are having equal mass number but opposite are not an opposite different atomic number then isodiaphors they are the atoms of different element which have the same difference of the number of neutrons and protons so here we can observe boron 5 boron 11 so here number of protons are 5 neutrons 6 electrons 5 so if you take the difference between number of neutrons and proton you will get 1 similarly 6 c 13 isotope of carbon which is having proton 6 electron 6 and neutron 7 if you take the difference of neutron and proton which gives 1 isotones are they are also known as isoneutronic species or isotonic as the name itself indicates they are the atoms of different elements which have the same number of neutrons hence they are also called as isoneutronic species so here if you consider 1h3 which has two neutrons similarly 2he4 which is also having two number of neutrons then isosters they are the molecules which have the same number of atoms and electrons like co2 number of atoms are 3 and number of electrons are 22 similarly if you consider n2o number of atoms are 3 and number of electrons are 22 isoelectronic species they are the atoms or molecules or ions which have the same number of electron if you consider chloride ion which consists of 18 electrons similarly argon which is also consists of 18 electrons nuclear isomers so they are also known as isomeric nuclei and these are the atoms with the same atomic number and same mass number but with the different radioactive properties like we have an example of uranium uranium x and uranium z with the different half life then different atomic models in that the first atomic model is thomson's atomic model so which explains the electrical neutrality of an atom then the second model of an atom is rutherford's alpha scattering experiment so here rutherford give a some postulates and observation and results of alpha scattering experiments so from this rutherford's alpha scattering experiment we can know that atom consists of a small region at the center which is called as nucleus so here we can observe the results of rutherford's nuclear model of an atom so alpha particles showing small deflection then large deflection as well as some of the alpha particles they get deflected in the same direction as the direction of alpha particle that is they are get bounced back in the opposite direction and here we can observe why the deflection takes place because of the presence of nucleus what is the charge in the nucleus which consists of both proton as well as neutron hence it consists of positive charge and we know that alpha particle which is nothing but a nucleus of an helium atom which is equivalent to nucleus of an helium atom so that both are having positive charge so if the alpha particle came near to the top of nucleus of an atom which repels each other like this so those alpha particles get deflected by either small angle or large angle or we can observe some of the alpha particle get bounced back in the opposite direction like this then electromagnetic waves are they are also known as radiant energy radiation or electromagnetic radiation so it is the energy transmitted from one body to another in the form of waves and these waves travel in the space with the same speed as light that is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and those waves are known as electromagnetic waves are radiant energy 
and we have different electromagnetic radiation they are arranged in the increasing order of their wavelength or decreasing order of their frequency so different electromagnetic radiations are cosmic rays alpha ray x ray ultraviolet rays visible rays infrared rays microwaves as well as radio waves okay here we can observe the three dimensional diagram of electromagnetic radiation as the name itself indicates it consists of both electric field as well as magnetic field and those electric and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave then so these are the properties of uh, this electromagnetic radiation wavelength as well as frequency range of different electromagnetic radiation and their sources so a radio waves these are obtained by alternating current of high frequency microwave so klystron tube infrared rays incandescent objects visible rays electric bulbs and sun rays ultraviolet rays sun rays are lamps with mercury vapor x rays cathode rays striking metal plate then gamma rays secondary effect of radioactive decay cosmic rays outer space then characteristic properties of electromagnetic radiation they are characterized by different properties like wavelength frequency velocity amplitude wave number etc so let me discuss one by one if you consider wavelength they are represented by symbol lambda so it is nothing but the distance between two nearest neighboring crest or nearest neighboring trough which is represented by r which is expressed in terms of nanometer or angstrom meter then frequency which is represented by symbol nu which is defined as the number of waves which passes through a particular point in 1 second and the s unit of frequency is hertz or per second or which is also known as one cycle per second or cycle per seconds then time period that is time time taken by a wave to pass through one particular point and time period which is a reciprocal of frequency then velocity that is represented by symbol c r v velocity of a wave is defined as the distance traveled by a wave in 1 second and c is nothing but lambda as well as frequency so here we can observe c which is equal to a product of wavelength and frequency nu lambda and we can rearrange this equation with respect to wavelength as well as frequency then wave number which is represented by symbol nu bar it is a reciprocal of wavelength that is number of waves that present in a unit distance and the s unit will be per meter or per centimeter amplitude amplitude of a wave is defined as the height of crest or depth of trough and amplitude here we can observe the diagram it may be an height of crest or depth of trough so in a single wave both the distance are equal so that we can consider either height of crest or depth of trough and here we can observe the distance between two neighboring crest or neighboring trough which is equal to wavelength then planck's quantum theory so according to planck's quantum theory the radiant energy emitted or absorbed by a body not continuously but discontinuously in the form of small discrete packet of energy known as quantum and we have a planck's quantum theory equation that is we know that energy is directly proportional to frequency that is e directly proportional to nu and for planck's quantum theory if you uh, remove the con uh, proportionality constant we have to substitute the planck's constant that is h hence the equation becomes e is equal to h nu or we know that nu can be written as c by lambda so that e is equal to h c by lambda where h planck's constant 
it is having the value 6.626 into 10 power minus 37 kilojoules per second. Sorry, kilojoules second. Then, total amount of energy transmitted from one body to another will be some integral multiple of energy of a quantum. Hence, the equation becomes E is equal to nh nu or E is equal to nh c by lambda. Or we can also use the equation like E is equal to nh c nu bar. Then, the next atomic model will be Bohr's atomic model. So, in theory itself, uh, we, you know that uh, some postulates of Bohr's atomic model. So, we'll just give the some important formulae regarding Bohr's atomic model. That is columbic force, K Q1 Q2 divided by R square. Centrifugal force, MV square divided by R. Angular momentum, MVR. Then the energy of electron. So the total energy will be calculated by sum of potential energy as well as kinetic energy and energy of an electron, which is equal to En, which is equal to minus two pi square z square Me to the power four divided by n square h square, where n is an whole number integer. E energy of an electron in nth orbit, z nuclear charge, E minus that is charge on the electron, m mass of the electron, h Planck's constant. And here we can have a different uh, formula to find out uh, energy of an electron that is simplified forms. En, which is equal to E1 into z square divided by n square. This is for hydrogen like atoms. E, which is equal to minus 21.79 into 10 power minus 19 z square divided by n square joules per atom which is also taken as minus 13.6 z square divided by n square electron volts per atom. It is also considered as minus 313.6 into z square divided by n square kilo calorie per mole. So E is also represented as minus 1312 divided by n square kilo joules per mole. So these are the different uh, formulas of energy of an electron with respect to different units. Then here we can observe Bohr's atomic model that is arrangement of protons, electrons in Bohr's atomic model. Then a radii of an orbit, we can calculate the radii of an nth orbit by using the equation r is equal to n square h square divided by 4 pi square m k z e square. By putting the value of h, pi, m, e and k, the simplified form will be r equals 0 0.529 into n square z divided by z into a. Or we can also take that r is equal to 0 0.529 into n square divided by z into 10 power minus 10 meter, that is Armstrong. Or we can also written in the form of r is equal to 0 0.529 into 10 power minus 8 into n square divided by z centimeter. And for hydrogen like atom, r n, which is equal to r1 into n square. Then formulate to find out velocity of an electron. V is equal to 2.188 into 10 power 8 z by n centimeter per second. Angular momentum mvr, which is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi, that is mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. Then these are the different uh, orbitals present in an atom. That is, we have s, p, d, as well as f orbitals. So, s orbital is having spherical shape like this. Then p orbital. So we have three p orbitals in p subshell px, py, pz. And the orientation of those dumbbell shape p orbital is based on the axis. Then d orbital. So d orbital is having double dumbbell shape. And d subshell consists of five d orbital d, x, y, d, y, z, d, z, x. 
d x square y square and d z square so these are the shapes of d orbitals then f orbital they have a complex shapes and they are having seven different orientations then orbital it's a three dimensional space around the nucleus where probability of finding the electron will be maximum and there are two different types of nodes in an orbital one is radial node and the one is angular node radial node are the points at some distance from the nucleus where there is zero probability of finding the electrons and angular nodes these are the directional in nature so there are associated with p and d orbital and one can know the definition for nodes or nodal region these are the again a three dimensional space in which probability of finding the electron will be negative or zero or we can say that negligible then for a particular quantum number n total number of nodes will be n minus 1 and radial nodes will be n minus l minus 1 and angular nodes will be l and there is some differences between orbit and orbital so orbits is represented by n and orbital which is represented by m it has a maximum electron capacity of 2 n square with respect to orbit but if you consider orbital they can occupy only two electrons and orbit is bigger in size while orbital is having smaller in size orbit consists of sub orbits but orbital sub orbit consists of orbitals and orbit having only spherical shape while orbitals are having different shape like spherical dumbbell double dumbbell complicated like that orbit the path of an electron around the nucleus is called an orbit it's an imaginary region while orbital the space around the nucleus where probability of finding an electron is maximum these are the definitions for orbit and orbital then spectrum when a radiation is passed through a spectroscope or prism for the dispersion of the radiation then the pattern or photograph obtained on the screen or photographic plate is known as spectrum they are mainly classified into two types one is emission spectrum another one is absorption spectrum if you consider emission spectrum again they are further classified into continuous emission spectrum line emission spectrum band emission spectrum and if you consider absorption spectrum they are further classified into line absorption spectrum and band absorption spectrum so here we can observe emission spectrum are colored lines on black background while absorption spectrum is having black lines on spectrum background that is colored background then with respect to hydrogen spectrum we have six different series but in the syllabus we have only five lyman balmer paston bracket as well as p1 but one more series is there that is humphrey series then Lyman series is observed in UV region. Palmer series is observed in visible region. Paston series, which is observed in infrared, while bracket P fund is also observed in infrared region. And Humphrey series, which is observed in far IR region. And here is the N2 and N1 values of these six different series in hydrogen spectrum. Then, based on hydrogen spectrum, we have a Rydberg's equation. From Rydberg's equation, one can calculate wave number. And if you got the wave number, we can easily calculate wavelength frequency for a given atom. So, nu bar, which is equal to 1 by lambda, that is a reciprocal of wavelength. So, Rydberg's equation is nu bar, which is equal to r into z squared, into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. 
Z is an atomic number or Redberg's constant that is 109743 per centimeter. N2 and N1 will be higher as well as lower orbit or shells. Then total number of spectral lines N into N minus 1 divided by 2 when electron jump from nth level to ground level. And one more formula N2 minus N1 into N2 minus N1 plus 1 divided by 2 when electron jump from N2 to N1. Similarly, we can substitute the value of N3 as well as N4 were different uh, shells. That is transition of electrons. Dual nature of matter suggested by D. Broglie. So hence, the derivation of a D. Broglie's equation can be considered as lambda which is equal to H by MC or H by MV. So here lambda that represents wave characteristics of nature and mass that represents the particle nature of matter. So the de Broglie's equation suggested that matter consists of two different behaviors. One is particle nature, another one is wave nature. So the waves associated with material particles or objects in motion are called matter waves or de Broglie's waves, which is calculated by lambda is equal to H by mv. Then number of revolution per second by an electron in a shell may be given as velocity divided by 2 pi r, that is v by 2 pi r. Then de Broglie's equation and kinetic energy relationship. So E is equal to half mv square, we know that. Then 2em, which is equal to m square into v square, square root of 2em, which is equal to mv. And we know that the product of mass and velocity will be equal to momentum. So that lambda can also represented by h by p. And from this equation, p is equal to square root of 2em. So that lambda is equal to h by square root of 2em. Then number of waves in an orbital, which can be calculated by 2 pi r divided by lambda. Or 2 pi r into mv divided by h or mvr into 2 pi divided by h. mvr is nothing but angular momentum which is equal to nh by 2 pi according to Bohr's model. So that nh by 2 pi into 2 pi divided by h which is equal to n. Therefore, number of waves in an orbital which is equal to n. Photoelectric effect. So, what is the definition of photoelectric effect? It's the process of emission of electrons from the metallic surface when a suitable radiation frequency or suitable frequency radiation falls on the metallic surface. And here we have some mathematical expression that with respect to photoelectric effect. That is H nu which is equal to H nu naught plus kinetic energy. H nu is equal to H nu naught. We know that kinetic energy can be considered as half mv square. And half mv square, which is equal to H nu minus H nu naught. So here nu represents frequency of incident radiation, while nu naught that represents threshold frequency. What is meant by threshold frequency? It's nothing but the minimum amount of frequency required to emit the electron from the metallic surface. So that this equation can also written in the form of E which is equal to E naught plus kinetic energy. E energy of an incident radiation, E naught threshold energy. So which is defined as the minimum amount of energy required to emit the electrons from the metallic surface. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So it states that it is impossible to measure simultaneously both the position and velocity or momentum of a moving subatomic particle with absolute accuracy or certainty. And which is mathematically represented by del 
delta x into m into delta v which is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi or delta x into delta p which is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi here delta x or dx that is represented by uncertainty in position error in position delta v uncertainty in velocity h planck's constant m mass of the particle quantum numbers so which is based on a quantum mechanical model of an atom what is meant by quantum mechanics which is just a theoretically based assumptions as well as experimentally determined theories so according to quantum mechanical model we have four different quantum numbers that represents or that gives information about shell subshell and orientation of orbital as well as orientation of electron in an atom so the four quantum numbers are principal quantum number represented by n azimuthal quantum number represented by l magnetic quantum number represented by m spin quantum number represented by s so principal quantum number that represents the main shell in which electron is present and they are represented by symbol k l m n with the value 1 2 3 4 etc azimuthal quantum number which represents the subshell in which electron is present and the value of l will be starting from 0 1 2 3 up to n minus 1 so we have four subshells s p d and f the value of l for these subshells will be for s which is 0 and for p 1 d 2 f 3 then magnetic quantum number that represents the orientation of orbitals in space and the value of m varies from minus l to plus l including zero which means if you consider p orbital or i will consider d orbital which is having l value 2 l value for d orbital is 2 then if you consider m value that is magnetic quantum number for d orbital which is having l value 2 so which having the values minus 2 2 plus 2 including 0 that means minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 that consists of five different values hence d subshell consists of five orbital if you consider p orbital l value will be 1 and m value will be minus 1 0 plus 1 hence p subshell consists of 3 p orbital and if you consider f orbital l value will be 3 hence m value will be minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 there are seven values of magnetic quantum number that means they exhibit seven different orientation hence they consist of seven different orbitals in f subshell and spin quantum number that represents the orientation of electron in an orbital which consists of two values that is plus half or minus half if the electron orient in clockwise direction which consists of plus half char value and if you consider electron with anti clockwise direction which is having minus half value Schrodinger's wave equation. So, in quantum mechanical model, we came to know that Schrodinger's wave equation that is, so I will first write the simplified form of Schrodinger wave equation that is E psi, which is equal to, a lambda psi. We know that psi, which is equal to, wave function and here we have a complicated or application of Schrodinger's wave equation so lambda square psi plus 8 pi square m divided by h square into e minus nu theta which is equal to zero so here m represents mass of an electron e total energy of electron psi wave function h Planck's constant, nu potential energy of electron, then so here 
this symbol that represents a laplacian operator so this schrodinger's wave equation is represented by e psi which is equal to h cap psi with where h cap is known as hamiltonian operator sorry the equation is e nu e psi which is equal to h cap psi not the lambda psi e psi which is equal to h cap psi E represents energy, psi represents wave function, H cap represents Hamiltonian operator. Then electronic configuration of an atom, which means how to fill the electrons in an atom are different orbitals in an atom. So to fill the electrons in different orbitals of an atom, we have to follow three rules like Aufbau principle, Hans rule of maximum multiplicity and Pauli's exclusion principle. So, Aufbau principle states that electrons are filled in an in ground state of an atom. Electrons are filled in an orbital, different orbitals, in the increasing order of their energy. And the second rule that is Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. So, which states that in case of degenerate orbitals. Okay, this rule determines the arrangement of electrons in the orbital of same energy. Same energy orbitals means degenerate orbitals. So now I can explain the statement of Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. So it states that in case of degenerate orbitals, electron pairing do not take place until all the orbital get singly occupied. Then the last one, Pauli's exclusion principle. So it states that no two electrons in an atom can have all the four quantum number value same or no two electrons of an atom can have the same set of all four quantum number values. Then n plus l rule. So which is used to calculate the energy of a different orbital. So according to it, the sequence in which various subshells are filled up can also be determined with the help of n plus l value. So here we have, if you consider 2p and 3s orbital, they are having same n plus l value, then which orbital is having maximum energy? That is based on n plus l value. If Okay, here we have two statements for n plus l value. The first statement will be among two orbitals, orbital with high n plus l value, high n plus l value will have high energy and if both orbitals are having same n plus l value then orbital with higher n value is having higher energy so that among 2p and 3s, 3s orbital is having the value of n which is equal to 3. Hence, it is having highest energy. Similarly, here we have 3p and 4s. No doubt, 3p and 4s are having equal n plus l value. But 4s is having higher energy because of its maximum n value. Then, so here... There are some important memory tips, which means uh, important formulas that you have to remember. Frequency, nu is equal to C by lambda. Energy of a photon, E is equal to H nu or H C by lambda. Also, E is equal to 1, 2, 3, 7, 5 divided by lambda, electron volts. And lambda, which is in angstrom units. 
n electronic energy change during transition that is delta e which is equal to e n2 minus e n1 where n2 is greater than n2 emission spectra if electron jumps from n2 to n1 shell and absorption spectra if electron excites from n1 to n2 shell radius of nth bohr's orbit of hydrogen atom it is rn which is equal to n square h square divided by 4 pi square m e square k where k which is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 and r1 for hydrogen which is equal to 0 0.529 angstrom rn for hydrogen like atom that is equal to rn which is equal to 0 0.529 n square divided by z angstrom velocity of an electron in nth bohr's orbit of hydrogen atom that is v is equal to 2 pi k z e square divided by n h or simplified formula v is equal to 2.18 into 10 power 8 z by n centimeter per second energy of electron in nth orbit that is nth bohr's orbit of hydrogen atom that is e is equal to 2 pi square m z square e to the power 4 k square divided by n square h square and the simplified formula e is equal to minus 13.6 z square divided by n square kilo calorie per mole so e1 for hydrogen spectrum like minus 21.72 into 10 power minus 12 of or minus 13.6 electron volts and e1 for hydrogen like atom that is e1 for hydrogen which is equal to z square Then, wavelength emitted during transition in hydrogen spectrum. That is nu bar, which is equal to 1 by lambda, is equal to Rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square, which is also considered as 2 pi square m e to the power 4 divided by ch equal to the 3 power 3 into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square, which is expressed in CGS units. Photoelectric effect, h nu, which is equal to w plus half mv square or h nu which is equal to i e that is internal h e plus kinetic energy possible transition for a jump from n2 to n1 which is equal to psi sorry sigma n square n2 minus n1 so n2 to n1 possible transition for jump from n2 to n1 which is equal to sigma n2 minus n1 angular momentum of an electron in an orbit that is n h by 2 pi and angular momentum of electron in an orbital n h by 2 pi into square root of l into l plus 1 total spin so of an electron which is plus or minus half into n where n is number of unpaired electron magnetic moment of an atom that is represented by symbol mu magnetic moment which is, which is calculated by square root of n into n plus 2 bm where bm is bohr magneton and n will be number of unpaired electron nodal planes are radial nodes which is calculated by n minus l minus 1 and angular nodes is calculated by 1 and total nodes which is calculated by n minus l so angular nodes is l then d broglie's equation lambda is equal to h by mu or h by mv or lambda is equal to h by p which is equal to square root of h square divided by 2 into kinetic energy into mass of a particle where lambda is wavelength m is mass and v is velocity of a particle then heisenberg's uncertainty principle delta p into delta x which is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi or delta v into delta x which is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi m delta p delta v delta x are uncertainties in momentum velocity and position respectively so here we have a different uh, a number of shells that is principal quantum number one two three four five six etc and radius velocity energy and wavelength for these different shells present in an atom So this is a brief synopsis for the chapter structure of atom for the competitive exams like NEET, JEE as well as KCET. So if the video is useful for you, please like, 
and share with your contacts and do subscribe to the channel Catalyst Chemistry Classes. Thanks for watching.